Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel and thank you for being here. So this afternoon, I am going to get that ring installation finished. We finally got a chime. Yay. So we're going to do that. That video will be published this week. But today what we want to talk about is this Grandstream router. Now, Grandstream is traditionally known for their phone systems and their phones, and they've decided to get into the IP networking world. And uh, they heard that I like routers and firewalls and switches and access points, so they sent me this. So thank you, Grandstream, if you're seeing this. They also sent me a couple of their access points, which we're going to deploy. And their access points are kind of neat because they can act as the controller themselves, or this guy can be the controller. Now, the only downside to is to uh, the access points that I found at this point is that whichever way you you uh, set them up to be a controller that's that's it uh, you can't change it otherwise you have to factor default anyway back to this this is the GWN 7000 enterprise multi WAN gigabit VPN router so before we open it and do our measurements let's uh, go over to the Grandstream site and as you can see, it's over here on Amazon as well. I'll put a link to that down in the description. Just their kind of quick overview is that it has 7 gigabit ports, 2 WAN plus 5 LAN. It's got hardware accelerated VPN, including PPTP, L2TP, IPsec, and OpenVPN. Now, I don't know that that OpenVPN is going to be hardware accelerated. It could be. I don't know. But we're going to, you know, we're going to check it out. This We're adding this to the fold. We're adding this to the lab. So we're going to be able to check all these things out. It has an embedded controller that can manage 300 plus of their access points, multi-WAN ports with load balancing and failover, intuitive web interface to centrally, centrally monitor provision the entire network, 1 million PPS and 10 gigabit aggregate switching power, uh, rich peripheral support, printer, NAS, file server through the USB ports, rich firewall features including NAT, DMZ, port forwarding, SPI, and UPnP. They've got some nice little icons down here, VPN, built-in provisioning, everything we just kind of talked about. And uh, this has not been out of the box. I have actually not opened this. So I'm assuming that we're going to want to go out. We're going to want to get the newest firmware. So we'll look at all that. Let's see if there's any firmware available. Uh, so we went to resources. Uh, here we go. Firmware list, maybe. Because I was uh, on their community site, and I've signed up, and I'm going to start participating over there. Um I saw that they did have some new firmware, so it looks like the latest is four dot or 1.0.4.23, so we're going to go ahead and snag that guy, and he's about 45 megs, but while that's downloading, we'll go ahead and we'll open this box, I'll show you what's in the box, and then we will use the official H5 technology ruler, thank you Dennis. And uh, we'll get down to business here. So here's the box. The box itself, when you get it, is almost exactly 12 inches by 2 inches by, let's see, about 6.5. So I don't know how many edge router X's that equates to, but... All right, we're going to go ahead and open the box here. Actually, I'm going to put this guy back here for a second. We open it up. We have a quick start guide. We love our quick start guides. We have a copyright notice and warranty disclaimer. And then they also have the GNU public license in here for all the software that they use on this. That is, that is pretty nifty. So quick start guide. Then we've got a power cube here, plastic bags. Man, just get rid of the plastic bags. And this looks like it's a 12 volt, 2 amp output on this. And just to give you an idea, this power brick is uh, it's about 3 inches tall. And it's about an uh, inch and a quarter 
wide there. So yeah, about three and then an inch and a quarter and then a little over an inch and a half wide. It's got a nice long cord on it, probably a six foot cord at least. And what else is in the box? So then we have the router itself. We'll get to that here in a second. But I want to see what else it comes with. Nothing, just a lot of, a lot of cardboard. So we'll close that up. And now we have the router itself. Hmm, I love that new electronic smell. I love it. All right, so here's the router itself, and man, it is, it is pretty sharp looking. Uh, it looks like like a little appliance, um, you know, something that you would find sticking out by your TV. So you can see it's vented on that side. This is the front. It's vented on this side. They have uh, warranty stickers on the bottom. Now it comes with the feet already installed, but then it also has the holes here where we can go ahead and mount this guy to a wall. And then on the back, it looks like we've got uh, two USB ports here. We've got our two WAN ports. We got a net and then five LANs and it looks like then there's a PoE. Got a reset and power down here as well. So we're going to figure out what that LAN 1 slash PoE is all about and the net and then the two the two WANs. So this has got uh, quite a few ports on it. Physical measurements on this guy. The unit is just a smidge under eight inches wide, about an inch and a quarter tall, and about five and a half inches deep. I mean, overall, it's a really nice looking unit, and then they do provide on the top which I was like, oh my gosh, I scratched it, but I didn't. They've got this film so that you don't scratch it. So that's that's kind of brilliant. So we're going to set this guy back here so you can see. And then we're going to get the quick start guide out. The quick start guide is like 28 pages. Oh, but there's multiple, those, m there is multiple languages. So what we are looking for is let's see one two uh three three pages so the first three pages of the grand stream qsg that is all that we're looking for and uh let's see what it says here real quick it they talk about everything that uh they did on the website right in the beginning you can see this here so you've got your overview again, you got some precautions, package contents. So it came with a router, came with the 12 volt power adapter, came with the quick installation guide and the GPL statement. So we received everything we were supposed to. Now it says that the NAT, the uh, net port is gigabit, can be configured as WAN, LAN, or voice over IP. So it is a, that, that port apparently has some flex. WAN 1 and 2 are supposedly dedicated for WAN. LAN 2, 3, and 4 are just LAN ports that are gigabit. LAN 1 slash PoE, ooh, it supports PoE plus out. So that is fantastic. Is it out, or does it mean that we can power this with PoE plus? Hmm. Don't know. I'm a, I've got to assume that it's out. Tells us how far apart our holes are for wall mounting. Okay, so option B is, yes, this device can be powered over PoE Plus. So if I were to actually stick a PoE Plus connection in LAN 1, to my edge router switch that can, pro or to my uh, Unify switch that can provide that, this should power up. Now, we're not going to test that right now because I don't want to create a, a bunch of conflicts. 
inside my network. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to plug the power in, and then I'm going to plug my PC in. We're going to log in for the first time. We're going to upgrade the firmware. We're going to see what's up. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the power plugged in, and then I have my PC plugged into the first port, which would be the LAN 1 slash PoE. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, we got some blinky lights. The power is blinking. That must indicate it's booting. And then, of course, my PC is throwing a fit because it's trying to get an IP address. So let's see what happens here if I release my IP and I renew it. Uh, I can't imagine that it takes this thing too long to boot. Because it says to access the configuration, connect your computer to one of the LAN ports on the router using an Ethernet cable. Once you're uh, connected, your computer will be assigned a 192.168 IP address. And then we are supposed to launch a web browser and go to 192.168.1.1. How cliche is that? Uh, do you want your... No, we do not want to be discoverable. So, let's load up. Looks like... Uh, did we get an IP? Yes, we did. So, let's hop over to the web interface. Alright, so I just typed in 192.168.1.1 and it does redirect you to HTTPS. So, we are going to proceed to that. And it says, enter admin in the username and password fields and click sign in. So it's admin, admin, uh, wrong username or password. So is it just admin? Interesting. So it is telling us wrong username and password. Enter admin in the username and password field and then click sign in. So right out of the box I have a failure and that's not good. So let me figure out what the username and password is supposed to be and we'll be right back. Alright so I've been messing around with it a little bit. I even went ahead and plugged in WAN1. You can see that eh, maybe you can't see. There you go. That there's uh, We've got activity on WAN1 course LAN 1 where my PC is and then power. I'm not able to get out to the internet. I'm not able to ping into my uh, other network at all. So 66.1 should be the gateway for the WAN. And so I'm not sure what happened with this guy, but uh, I am going to click the, or I'm not going to click, I'm going to take our handy dandy reset tool and I'm going to go ahead and factory default this and see what happens. We'll be right back. Okay, so I used the magic reset tool. Everything came back up. I can ping around now. I should probably be able to ping out to uh, Google, I'd imagine. Web interface refreshed. So let's see if admin admin works. Okay, so for some reason I just had to factory default this guy out of the box. Um, you know, this probably has an early version of firmware on it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. So if you run into that, just do a factory reset. So we're going to set the new admin password. And I'm just using a lab password. We're going to make all the passwords the same. It says we must, must change the password before logging in. So we're logging in now. And right away it comes up with a wizard. Now remember, this is the first time I've ever touched this. So we are doing this together. We're harnessing our networking prowess and we are configuring this. So it says this will uh, take us through the basics of setup. So we'll click next. WAN port's going to be enabled. DHCP. That's fine. We don't have any APs. And network group. Use this screen to configure basic Wi-Fi and other settings for the default network group. So we're going to enable IP version 4. We'll leave it at 1.1, 1 1.10. 1 that's fine. We are not going to enable Wi-Fi at the moment. So we're just going to hit complete. Cool. Now it takes us takes us here. So the firmware version is 1.0.2.71 that came loaded on this. And 
you can see that we are on 1.0.4.23. So this this came with an older firmware. So lug, you know, I'm I'm probably going to chalk up what happened out of the box to firmware. So the next thing though that we want to do is we want to go ahead and upgrade that firmware. So I went to system settings maintenance. There's basic. Here's our all of this good information. I want to go to upgrade. And we're going to upgrade via HTTPS firmware server automatic upgrade. Let's see. So check. Um, let's see. Let's hit. Um, let's hit up upgrade. Are we sure we want to upgrade? Yes. So it says upgrading. Upgrade failed. Not sure why the upgrade failed. Automatic upgrade. So it can automatically do the firmware. We'll apply these changes. Let's see. Maybe that's what we needed to do. Apply successfully. So let's upgrade now. Yes, we want to upgrade. Upgrading. Upgrade failed. Hmm. Interesting. So let's see if we can actually find firmware that grand stream. So let's do a copy link on that. Let's do this. We'll save this. Yeah, we'll apply it. Let's hit upgrade now and see what happens. Upgrade failed. Oh, you know what? We have that extraneous stuff there. So let's apply that. And hit upgrade. Yes, we want to upgrade. Upgrading. Upgrade did not fail this time. Perfect. So we just had to have the right firmware server. So now the device is going out and it is upgrading. So I didn't really think we would be giving this a fair shake if we took it out of the box and we used it on a firmware that's two revisions behind and obviously maybe has some issues. Now, like I said, Grandstream's just getting into this and you know their phones are solid. Their phone systems are solid. So if their router and their Wi-Fi are going to be as solid, then I think they're going to have a pretty good offering and some of these other companies are going to have to kind of watch out you know and I think they all kind of beg borrow and steal from each other anyway it's just like artists you know all the great artists borrowed from other great artists all that good stuff so I think that's probably the same thing that's going on here so it looks like the device is rebooting you may re-log in by clicking on the link below two minutes after the reboot so it's 144 so I'm gonna pause this I'm gonna come back at 146 okay our login page reloaded here so we're going to go ahead and put our admin username and password in and it's loading and let's see wow there's uh, some new options definitely this web WAN access I don't believe was was there before and it looks like this all is the same so that's good Access. This is where we change the passwords. Here's syslog server and log server. So that's <laughs> that's awesome. They've got comprehensive logging right out of the gate here. All right. So let's go to our overview. So there's zero APs. There's one client, and the client is wired. This is actually a pretty nice. Look at this. Uh, we're gonna have to hook an access point to this and and get this guy kind of filled out because this this is kind of nice. This dashboard right here, I like this. I really do like it. All right, so for router. Let's see, WAN status, WAN's enabled. Here's our IP address. This is how long, as long it has been up. Looks like if we start generating some application traffic, we may be able to see something going on. And they actually call it DPI. So we can enable application tracking. Improve DPI performance by rebooting your router after DPI is enabled. You can choose which interface you're going to track it on. That's cool. Ports. So WAN port 1, DHCP. WAN port 2, not enabled. Additional WAN port. 
we can add an additional WAN port. Looks like we've got, oh, here you go for you IP version 6 folks. Here is the 6 to 4 tunneling. LAN port, enable LAN 1, which is that net port, so that's that extra port. Global settings, multi WAN. Here are our options. There's either load balance plus failover or failover. And look at this, we can do port mirroring. So if this doesn't have any IPS, IDS stuff built into it, we can go ahead and mirror these Ethernet ports. We've got static routes, and here's our actual route table. So that's that's pretty awesome. IP version 6 routes, the four routes again. Okay, quality of service. So looks like it's got upstream quality of service. So we can do WAN 1, we can add interface, that's nice. There's a policer, so all right, look at that. That is fantastic. And then it's got a smart queue. That's pretty cool. I like this so far. Dynamic DNS support, so service name. It's pretty standard fodder right there. Of course, then we have the DPI, so we'll uh, go to access points. We don't have any access points yet. Now we can take a look at the clients. And what can we do with the clients here? We can edit. We can block. So if we want to block a client, we just come in here and click that, and it will block the client. So we can come in here and look. This is the desktop I'm currently on. There are no bandwidth rules, but check this out. We can come in here, and we can add bandwidth rules per user. And we can give this a name and give it a fixed IP. So we can do a DHCP reservation right there. Client access. So this is the global blacklist. I'm not sure what we do with this yet. Here's a time policy. So we can do time and then we can look at our banned clients. That's pretty cool. Here's our VPN. So here's our open VPN server. Here's our open VPN client. Pretty standard. Here's our L2TP IPsec. So we can add. We can do remote server, username and password, pre-shared pre key. So you know what this means. This means that we are absolutely going to have to do a video where we connect the grand stream to the Ubiquity devices. We got to do it. And then PPTP, we'll just pretend that PPTP is not even there. Uh, under our firewall, basic settings, we've got uh, SIN flood protection, port forwarding, DMZ, intergroup traffic. So it looks like we've got policies here. UPnP settings and status. Here's traffic rules. Okay, so this thing... Yeah, it's starting to, it looks like it's got a pretty comprehensive set. There's input, output, forwarding. So if we add a rule, oh yeah. Oh, and it's got the, the uh, week of the day scheduler, the time, firewall action. I'm digging it. We're really going to have to get into this. Advanced firewall. Here's our SNAT, our DNAT. So we can do that. So it looks like it's got IP masquerading on by default, but we can come in here and do SNAT and DNAT. You know, the one thing that I didn't check on the port, on the WAN, WAN 1, if we do a static IP, oh, look, here it is. We can do additional IP version 4. So this thing right out of the box can do all of that stuff so we can have um, multiple IPs on the WAN. I love it. All right, so now we've got captive portal. So it looks like we're going to, this has got a captive portal built directly into it. it looks like there's some um, images already on the device I'd imagine that the storage is built in so we could do no authentication so this is pretty neat we're gonna have to play with all these things now here's our bandwidth rules and this is either SSID MAC address or IP address I like that all right, net, network group, so group zero, WAN membership, WAN port one, LAN membership, VLAN ID. 
system settings and we went, kind of went over this we've got our upgrade our access our log server here's our debugging information so it looks like we can do packet captures that's awesome core files ping traceroute syslog here's all of our syslog information here's our NAT table this is absolutely fantastic we've got uh, email notifications so we can set this up and get get emailed from the system so what do you want to get emailed about AP offline administrator password change I like that we can control the LEDs oh look at this looks like we've got a certificate manager built right in how awesome is that right through right through the the web UI they've got the cert manager here's file sharing which we don't have any USBs plugged in we've got SNMP down here we've got our user manager so we don't have any users added yet here's about so it talks here's the GN, GNU license they give uh, uh, credit to all of those that they are supposed to here's our alerting and our notification this is pretty cool this is absolutely cool there's one more thing that I want to look at and that's on our LAN port let's see maybe let's see what I don't see or what I didn't see was the VLAN setup so under router we've got our ports LAN port but what I don't see is where we can set up the VLANs. Maybe I maybe I missed it here. There's WAN one, here's tunnel, here's LAN port, global settings, port mirroring. Now am I missing a place where we can actually I mean there's uh, static routes, so we know we can do static routes. basic firewall rules so one thing I don't see is the VLANs and maybe maybe that doesn't exist but it should definitely exist somewhere alright I didn't want to bore you uh, with me poking around while I was doing that but it appears that to create other networks we have to come into the network group and go to add and then under basic we have this VLAN. Is it a VLAN? And what's the VLAN ID? So this is where we can start adding VLAN. So if we want to add VLAN 2, we'll just call this VLAN 2. We'll enable it. <coughs> we'll let it use WLAN, I'm sorry, or WAN port 1. It'll be under LAN 0 and it will be IP version 4. So there's the address and we'll enable DHCP and we'll just kind of leave this all kind of default and I'll show you if we click save so now we've got VLAN 2 it's a member of LAN 0 and it is VLAN ID number 2 so and look at this it shows us all of the different services that are on this box that are getting restarted I'm fairly certain this thing is running Linux under the hood but that's it that's the the grand stream GWN 7000 we took it out of the box we plugged it in I'm gonna enjoy having this guy in the lab so we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get more into this I'm gonna put the uh, my affiliate link down there so if you want to buy one and mess around with it if you know I, I get a lot of uh, email you know people are like uh you know this brand doesn't always meet my needs or what I want to do so that's why we check out all these brands you know so we we use Grandstream now we're gonna use Microtech we use Ubiquity we use whatever brands people want to me a network is a network is a network is a network it's about how these devices handle it and about 
the configuration and making sure things are kind of actually standards based and things like that. But I am going to enjoy this GWN 7000. So I have to tell the guys out, uh, guys and gals out at Grandstream, thank you again for sending this over. And we're going to do more than one video on this. We're going to get into this. Like I said, we're going to do the VPN video. We're going to do all that good stuff. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please use those Amazon affiliate links down there in the description. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.